Hey, this is Corey from STC Team 9779, The Pie Eaters, and today we're going to show you how to make a simple autonomous class. At this point, you should be familiar with how to create your own teleop class, and in doing so, you should know how to declare variables, which is when you actually create a container that you can then put a variable into. Like when we say DC motor left wheel, we're creating a container called left wheel that we can then put a DC motor into later. You should also know how to instantiate variables, which is when you actually put something into that container. So for example, that's when we do hardware map.dcmotor.get left wheel. And that's going out to the hardware map, getting something called left wheel, and then putting it in that container. So if you're not familiar with that, then uh, I suggest going back and watching the previous videos until you're familiar with those concepts. So now we'll start creating our autonomous hood. So the first thing you're going to want to do is just like the teleop, come over here and right click the team code folder and make a new Java class. You're just going to go ahead and I'll name it example autonomous. And then when you create it, it comes up with the default script. So the first thing you're going to want to do is come up here and register it. Uh, which if you remember from teleop, that was when we did at teleop. And then we would put a couple things in the parentheses as parameters like the name and the group. But we're doing an autonomous. So up here, you'll just put at autonomous. And then if you press enter, it'll go ahead and import it for you. And in the parentheses this time, it's just like the uh, teleop. So we're just going to put name equals example autonomous. And then we'll make the group example. So now that it's registered, you're just going to come down here right next to the name of the class and say extends. And if you remember from the teleop videos, it was just op mode. But this time we're going to make something called a linear op mode. Import it. And then the difference between those is actually quite simple. If you remember from the op mode, it's divided into four separate sections, the init, start, loop, and stop. And then the loop portion, which is usually your main portion, uh, repeats over and over again, checking different variables and inputs to check and see what, what needs to be controlled on the robot. The difference with the linear op mode is that there's only one method, which if we come over here and press alt enter and implement methods, you can see that it's run op mode. So if we put that in here, you can see it. So this is the only method that is inherited by the linear op mode class. What this does is it runs once when the init button is pressed. And instead of looping over and over again, it's just going to go through it linearly, one line after the other, until it's finished. So it never loops, it never repeats, it just goes straight down the list until it's done. So every year in Autonomous, the FTC game usually has a scoring element where you can just go park in a zone and score a low point value, like 10 points. For example, let's just say that we need to drive forward, turn, drive forward again, and then we'll be parked in this little zone. So for this example, let's just assume that we have a tank drive two motored um, chassis. So we just have two motors, a left motor and a right motor. So let's just go ahead and, and declare those DC motor, press enter to uh, import it, left wheel, and DC motor, right wheel. So now we've created the containers for the left wheel and the right wheel that we can then put something into. Let's go ahead and put something into those down here and we'll instantiate them. So left wheel, equals hardware map dot DC motor dot get left wheel. And remember, this is just whatever, uh, whatever your motor is called out in that hardware map. So now we've just gotten um, whatever is called left wheel out on that hardware map and put it into our container for the left wheel. So we'll do the same thing for the right wheel, right wheel equals hardware map dot DC motor dot get right wheel. So next you just got to make sure that when you apply power of one to both of the wheels, it makes the robot go forward. So um, remember most of the tank drives, you just have to reverse one of the motors since one of them is on the left side and one of them is on the right side. One of them must be reversed to make the robot go forward. Yours doesn't have to look like this. Um, just use whatever worked in Teleop and put it right in here. 
but the most common usage is just reversing one of the wheels. So we'll just say left wheel dot set direction, DC motor dot direction dot reverse. So next we're gonna use something uh, new. It's a method called uh, wait for start. So what the wait for start method does is um, it just waits until that play button is pressed. So everything up until this point has started after that initialize button has been pressed. So right when the initialize button has been pressed, this method's called and it does all of this stuff. And then once it reaches this point, all it does is it waits until that play button is pressed. So once we hit the play button, we want the robot to actually move. So all we have to do is come down here and say left wheel dot set power one. And then we'll do the same thing for the right wheel. So it goes straight forward, right wheel dot set power one. So now we have it so the robot will go forward, but it won't stop. So it'll just go forward forever. So to make it so that it goes forward for a set amount, all we have to do is call something called sleep, which all that will do is basically wait for a number of milliseconds, as you can see here. So um, I've just put in a thousand, which will wait for one second. So now all we're doing is um, setting the power to one and waiting for one second. So it'll go forward for a second, and now we need to make it actually stop. So we just say left wheel dot set power zero, and right wheel dot set power zero. So now it will go forward at a value of one for one second, and then once it's waited for one second, it will go ahead and turn them off. So this should, in effect, make it go forward for a second and then stop. So that in and of itself could be a autonomous mode, um, in a lot of games, you can just kind of line up your robot towards the park zone and then just make it go forward onto the park zone. Um, but let's say that your game requires you to go forward, turn, and then go forward again. So now we'll just make it turn. All you have to do to make it turn is say left wheel dot set power, uh, and then a, po a positive value, and then right wheel dot set power, and then a negative value. So this will make the robot turn to the right because the left wheel is going forward and the right wheel is going backward, effectively spinning the robot to the right. But again, this will just make it go on forever. So what we have to do is sleep for, let's say, a 500. And then turn the wheels off again. So now this little block right here, all it should be doing is um, turning to the right for half of a second or 500 milliseconds and then stopping. So now we'll just make the robot go forward again. And all I had to do to that is probably just copy this code up here and then paste it down here. And then if we wanted, we could change this value. Let's just change it to 700. Let's say it was a slightly smaller drive, a 0.7 seconds instead of one second. So now all of this code will make the robot go forward, turn to the right, and then go forward again, hopefully parking it in the safe zone. So there's always stuff to tweak uh, in here. Uh, you can change the power of the wheels to make it go slower. So let's just say that the first drive should be slower. We set it to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, so that the robot's not speeding ahead. You can always change the um, times. So if this turn didn't turn far enough, we can change it to 1,000. And uh, let's say that this one didn't go far enough either, so we'll change that to 1300. And now um, it should technically just drive further because it's waiting longer. It's waiting for 1.3 seconds instead of one second. So it should effectively drive 0.3 seconds longer than it did before. But the thing you're going to want to be careful of is if you reduce the speed. So if we were up here, we reduce the speed from 1 to 0.5, then that's effectively making the robot go twice as slow. So now that the robot is going much slower, one second in time is a lot less distance. So instead of one second, we're probably going to want to increase this to two seconds so that that gets it back to where it was before, going the same distance, but it does take twice as long, but it's also going slower. And every time you change something like this, you're just going to have to re-upload it to your robot, run it again, see how it works. So as you can see, it will probably take a lot of tweaking to get your robot working the way you want it to in Autonomous. So now let's say that you have a servo on your robot that once you get to the safe zone needs to um, do something. It needs to deploy a color sensor or maybe dump something into a bucket. 
Uh, so let's say that we have a servo. Let's go ahead and declare it. Servo, enter the import. And then we're just gonna say, and then let's just call it dump arm. We'll go ahead and instantiate it. So we'll come down here, dump arm equals hardware map dot servo this time dot get. And we'll just say it was called dump arm. So the way you control servos is pretty much just like the way you control servos in Teleop. So all you have to do is, um, let's say at the end, it needs to dump something after it's gone forward, turned and gone forward. It's in the safe zone. It needs to dump something into the bucket. So we're just going to come down here after everything and say dump arm dot set position 0.5. So this would effectively make the arm go to the 0.5 position and then end the program. But let's say that you needed the arm to retract afterwards. So let's say that after it's dumped, so we'll sleep for a little bit to let it actually dump the stuff into the bucket. And then we'll retract it back to zero. So now it will effectively dump the objects, wait for them to be dumped, and then retract the arm back to the starting position and then end the program. And one last thing, when you start off, you want to make sure that your robot's in the 18 inch cube as always. So let's just come up here um, in the init section and make sure that that arm, the dump arm is set at the zero position so that it's retracted. It's in the, it's in the 18 inch cube and you can actually start the match. So I hope that this helped you uh, in your autonomous endeavors and um, maybe helps you understand the autonomous mode a bit more. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll try to answer them as soon as we can. And good luck in your autonomous this season.